the final game of the Carolina Nike Classic here at the beautiful new Carolina Soccer and Lacrosse Stadium. What a way to end things. It is the biggest rivals in college sports, the Tar Heels and the Blue Devils, ACC Network Extra. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us this evening. Alongside Natalie Bodie, I'm Kyle Straub. And despite these two being the biggest rivals, the women's soccer edition has been dominated by the Tar Heels. Natalie, if Duke wants to change things, it starts up top with their senior, Ella Stevens. Well, Kyle, you said it. Senior Ella Stevens, one of three seniors on this team, co-captain. She scored last game. They're going to really look to her to create some chances and opportunities up top for the Blue Devils. But if they want to pull off this upset, a lot of it rides on her back, Kyle. And on the North Carolina side, a lot of creativity shown Thursday night from a sophomore, Brianna Pinto. Not many players more dynamic than Brianna Pinto. You see here, she stays with the play, gets the cross, and puts that one away. Kyle, a lot of great players on this team, but something special about Pinto. You see here, the ball comes out, she collects it, individual effort, beats eight defenders, and puts that one away. She's going to have to be special tonight, but she has been in every game so far for the Tar Heels. A phenom freshman new to the rivalry. Will Sophie Jones have an impact for the Blue Devils? We'll find out next on ACC Network Extra. Just the second game that North Carolina will play in this brand new facility and the fans have come out to support them as they are ready to take on their rivals. And exciting for a top 10 preseason matchup. As we go ahead and get into this one, we'll take a look at the North Carolina starting lineup first. And you talked about the firepower the Tar Heels have. Absolutely. Look out for, as we mentioned, Brianna Pinto, but as well Bridget Andrzejewski. She can pick up some slack in the midfield, but has a lot of spark on offense for the Heels as well. Tar Heels going with a 4-3-3 today. They played a 3-4-3 in their first game on Thursday. We'll see what kind of a difference it makes for Duke. Also going with a 4-3-3. They've got some firepower there, but still trying to figure some things out. 
look out for a rookie in Sophie Jones, the top-ranked freshman in the country, coming in according to her coach, and then look to vet Ella Stevens to create some more firepower on offense for the Blue Devils. She'll need to step up and settle into a leadership role for her team, Kyle. Mary-Kate McGuire there, the center forward, scored the second goal on Thursday to help Duke to that opening 2 nothing win. Just about ready to go here. Carolina will have possession to start the contest off. There's got to be a lot of excitement and for a player down there on the field, this new stadium, your rivals here already, and I'm talking both sides having that energy. Absolutely, especially in a facility as great as this, Fetzer Field State of the Art, and what better way to kick things off than your second game being a rivalry game. Clear attempt, failed. A ball was loose for a second. Perilous moment. That one rolled towards the goal. Alessia Russo starting up top for Carolina. A big get for her to be back. She broke her leg just before the postseason started last year. Already you see the high pressure from Carolina forcing a couple of Duke turnovers. That'll be a lot of woman boys stepping up to take this one for the Tar Heels. She's a junior defender from London. According to coach Anson Dorrance, easily the fittest player on the roster. She's been a rock on defense for them. Carolina with numbers forward. Keep an eye on number eight right there. Pinto at the top of the box. They aim for her. She lets it go by. Got a touch on it. I believe that was golf behind her. Cleared away by the Duke defense. Jeske gives chase on the far side, but it's going to be cleared away by Delaney Graham, who was an ACC All-Freshman team member last year. Carolina tried to play that one through Russo, could not avoid it. Russo just a junior, another player from England. Again, the high pressure forcing a turnover. North Carolina looking to counter. Excuse me, Duke looking to counter as the freshman Jones takes it away. Mitchell with nowhere to go on that one, just sends it upfield, getting it out of the 18. You're going to see this all game long from the North Carolina Tar Heels. Their first game, Anson played 10 subs off the bench. Natalie, nine of them played 20 or more minutes. You're right, and that has a lot to do with the high pressure he expects to see from all of his offensive players. You mentioned it, that the defense usually stays pretty consistent throughout the season, but he'll make a lot of subs up top because he expects a lot all 90 minutes. Helped out by a really good recruiting class, something both these te uh, teams do equally well, and it's one of the ways you stay on top. Foul will go against Jones. She tried to spark the counterattack. Been a lopsided field here for the first three minutes. Ruben Moy will take the free kick again for Carolina. Going back to Wibbon, when she started at center back and played every minute of every single game that she appeared in for Carolina in 2018, only missing three of those games with a concussion. But what a rock she is on defense for them and, and such a leader on this squad. Played that one a little bit short. Sophie Jones got a foot on it, and here come the Blue Devils. They look to get in behind the defense. There is Rachel Jones falling back. She'll play it back to the keeper. That is Mars Josephson, the freshman. Josephson getting the second start in a row, but Anson likes to split duties in goal, though. There's McGuire trying to get around the corner, gets one towards the top of the box. Kyle, you mentioned Anson li liking to split the duties in goal, and you're right. Don't think that she beat out veteran Claudia Dickey for that spot. He tends to let the veteran choose if she wants to go first half or second half, and Dickey chose second half. So that is why Josephson is currently in goal. Saw that a bit last year when Dickey was in her freshman season. 
logged over 700 minutes in goal, but Samantha Leshnak was the starter for the Tar Heels, logged over 1,700 minutes. Duke with the takeaway at midfield. Another ball crossed into the box. Nobody on the other end of it, but a Tar Heel jersey. Goff with a failed clear attempt, though. Duke applying some offensive pressure to the Tar Heels after it was the other way for the first couple minutes. Here's a look at the longtime Tar Heel head coach, 41st season for Anton Dorrance at the helm, and it baffles me every time I see his record because in 41 years, he has not lost 100 matches somehow. Somehow. Definitely regarded by some as the greatest college coach of all time. He, he makes a great argument for it, but such great players have come through this program. A lot in attendance to watch this game tonight. Offside flag went up against the Blue Devils. Both of these teams 1-0 on the season. They opened up the Carolina Nike Classic Thursday. Duke played LaSalle. Was scoreless at the half, but a couple of second-half goals helped the Blue Devils to get the victory. And for the Tar Heels, they wasted no time. Andrew Jeske with a goal in the first half. Pinto, as we told you, in the open with a pair. And the Tar Heels defeated the Hoosiers 3-0. Some pressure from Russo, almost a turnover right to Andrew Jeske. Somehow snuck right underneath her cleat. Duke will quickly get it across midfield. Not quite 41 years, but Robbie Church in his 19th season now for the Duke Blue Devils. has had a nice run here recently with a couple of College Cup appearances in the last four years. And Duke had a pretty good season last last season in 2018. They lost to Georgetown in the round of 16. But past few years, Robbie Church really has done a lot with this program. And they're a competitive squad. Duke will look to replace a couple of big-time offensive players for them. Both Kayla McCoy and Taylor Rassiope graduated from last year's team. They accounted for... Almost half of the team's goals. Here's a nice takeaway from Pinto. She's got Russo on the wing. And a good job by the Duke defense to step up. Just getting a foot on that one was Tess Bodie. And you see there, Brianna Pinto just a little too hot to handle for Sophie Jones as she slashes through. Little freshman on sophomore action there, but Pinto comes in. Gets some pressure. She steals this ball and just streaks up the field. All the space in the world to create. But Sophie Jones tracks back, gets that second ball. But great pressure by Pinto in the midfield. Stevens playing a little back and forth on the near side with Bodie. That pass, though, a little too much on it from Stevens. It'll go out of bounds. Just one goal last year for Ellis Stevens. She was an assist machine. Led the team with 11 on the season. This year, Robbie Church wants to see some of those become some goals. Play a little bit more unselfish soccer is what he said. And it's hard when at 21 of your 41 goals came from Kayla McKay and Taylor Rassiope last year. If you're Duke, Kyle, they really need someone to step up and dominate in their offense and really lead the team. A creative player that can score frequent goals, but they just have not found that one person yet. Very early in the season, they definitely have time, but what a pair those two were last year. Duke forced to play it all the way back to Brooke Heinsen, the goalkeeper. Tried to build from the back, uh, the back line. Tar Heels always make that tough with that pressure from the forwards in the midfield as they're able to go so deep. Don't really have to worry about leaving much gas in the tank. They're only going to play about 30 minutes or so here in this first half. And that's one thing Coach Anson Dorrance noted is they recruit deep and so they don't play limited. They don't have a mindset where they're only going to play the same 13 players. Everyone is, or most everyone, is going to see the field. Good crisp passing there from the Tar Heels through the midfield. Results in a foul against Rachel Jones. And it will be a free kick for her team as Ruben Moy will come up from the back line again. Lesia Russo, the center forward, also going to go back and have a chat with her. Russo can really strike the ball from distance. Looks 
looks like it will be Ruben Moy who will play it. Seven at the top of the box for the heels towards the back post. The offside flag went up. Macy Bell with a nice run towards the near post. Take another look at this one. What a service from Ruben Moy. You see she gets a little ahead of her, herself. Freshman Macy Bell in position but just jumps the gun a bit but don't be surprised if you hear her name a lot it's just 18 19 years old she's already been called into the u23 national team but macy bell from wichita kansas she's definitely a player to watch this season swartz plays it back to mitchell jones hounded by a couple of tar heels duke having some trouble getting it out and russo is going to come away with it She's got Jones in the box. She makes a move towards the end line. The cross is not going to find its mark as it's sent out of bounds. It's Carly Pascal on defense. Keeping it away from Jones who is just waiting for that opportunity inside the 18. Rowan goes to Pinto. She's double teamed. Seen plenty of attacking. Great job there from Rachel Jones to keep that ball in play. We've seen a lot of attacking from both sides, but still nobody has registered a shot. Look at Rachel Jones go all out here to keep that ball in play. You think this game doesn't mean anything even though it's non-conference? Incredible effort by Jones. You see it there. Just a total effort play. Diving out of bounds to keep that one in. But one of the most creative players on UNC one of the most creative on UNC's roster, and you know Anson Dorrance loves to see that. Nice move from Russo to find some space. Looking for Pinto. It was Mitchell who got in the way of it. Again, Carolina into the box. This one too close to the goal, and Heinsohn will grab it out of the air. Duke doesn't try and play up through the midfield. Instead, the long ball ahead to Bodie. Now Jones will get the offense going. There's a foul against the Blue Devils. Already the fourth foul against Duke, who's been... Forced to play some tough defense. Most of the play has been back on their side of the field. Freshman Sophie Jones for Duke so far definitely not disappointing and doing a great job distributing the ball for Duke and her point of attack. Ruben Moya head to Goff. Russo will slow the attack up and North Carolina will switch fields. Pinto inside the 18. She's going to take a left-footed shot. Didn't get a lot on it. It may have been deflected by a defender. Langston able to handle it. Pinto did a really good job of settling that ball. A bit of a hard pass, but she settles it, turns, and gets a quick shot off. Even with her back to goal, gracefully pulls the trigger on that one. Long run down the far sideline from Mitchell. She came all the way up from the back line, but too much pace on that pass, and it's a giveaway right back to the heels. They bet ahead. Here's a shot. That one off the foot. And will sail well over the crossbar. Mary Kate McGuire looking for her second goal of the season. Mary Kate McGuire, one of those that Duke is looking to for heavy goal production this season as they find an offensive player to count on, but a good effort there from her. The substitutions will start already for Carolina. 14 minutes into the game, and the freshman from Clifton, Virginia, Ali Gambone, comes into the game. Gambone picked up an assist and got the start on Thursday for the Tar Heels in their win against Indiana. Two 
Duke has stuck primarily to the left side of the field when they've tried to get that attack started. They've definitely stayed on one side, Kyle, and that's up to their center mids, including Sophie Jones, to see the point of attack, get some field vision, and maybe switch it up when they can. In their last run, there was number 22, Delaney Graham, seemed wide open but couldn't get the ball to her, but perhaps switching the field could create more offensive opportunities for the Blue Devils. Instead, Carolina takes it away at midfield. Here's Rachel Jones. Good job. Poking that one away, that was Lily Nabet. Bodie near side plays it off of Taylor Otto. Otto, one of the leaders on this team. North Carolina brought back a lot from last year's team that went to the national championship where they lost to the Florida State Seminoles, who, by the way, won today but needed overtime. Came away with a 1 0 victory. Otto coming back and Anson Dorrance is going to rely a lot on her for some leadership with the loss of Julia Apter from last year's team. Coach Dorrance actually calls Otto one of the greatest leaders that he's ever coached. Said she knows the game inside and out, so you're absolutely right. Nice ball from Gambone. Pinto can't get a good strike on it, though. Great hustle from the sophomore. She's going to win it back. Here's a cross. Couldn't quite get around that one. It'll go out of bounds. Both of Carolina's shots have come from the sophomore, Pinto. Local product out of Durham, North Carolina. It's got to be great for Anson when he doesn't have to go very far to recruit. Absolutely, and an interesting story with Brianna Pinto, both of her parents actually being Carolina athletes. Her dad was a soccer player here in the 90s. Her mom played softball, and I know her brother plays over at Duke, and her younger brother committed to Princeton, so some prodigies within that family for sure. Russo looking for Jones, the pass a little bit out of her reach. Goff not giving up on the play, though. Bodie with Otto in front of her. Tar Heels a perfect 10-0 in ACC play during the regular season last year. This one doesn't count in the conference. As Russo builds the offense, leaves it wide for Andrew Jeske. These two will play later in the year at Duke. That one will be a conference matchup. Andrew Jeske's cross taken away by Jones. Last year, Natalie, with both of these teams not playing each other, I think fans, players, and coaches just said, you know what, we're not going to deal with that. We'll play a non-conference to make up for it this year. Absolutely, and why wait? I mean, it's got the stadium filled. Everyone loves a good rivalry game. There's a special type of energy between the two teams in a game like this, but I think you're absolutely correct. Why not have a rivalry game at the very beginning of the season and then one during conference play as well? You said the stadium filled. I know the capacity is just below 5,000. It looks like there's some empty seats, but a lot of people standing on a really cool night here in August. Be curious to see just how close they get to that capacity number. And I know that's one of the things that Anson really harped on with this stadium being built is that for Carolina and his programs, they weren't just winning national championships. They were winning the attendance races well across the country. Not so lately with Fetzer Field kind of falling behind the times. Now with this new place, he wants to get Carolina back on top of both of those categories. And when you have a coach as decorated as Anson Dorrance with so many accolades, so much credibility, you know, to hear him say that one of the last parts of his legacy is that he wants to leave is attendance. You take that seriously. And this game tonight, they've definitely got numbers. Nice cross attempt there by Duke. Looked like it was Wuben Moy who got ahead on it to redirect it to her keeper. First time we've seen some offense from Duke in quite some time.
And you do hope tonight that the UNC goalkeepers see some action. Last game against Indiana, neither keeper had to make a save at all, Kyle. Here comes Andrew Jeske, long run into the box. She lets one go with the right foot. Mitchell got in the way of it. Andrew Jeske with the cross, back post, Jones was there. See if that went off a due player. It did not. So it will go to the Blue Devils. Good service by Bridget Andrzejewski. Maybe just a little over hit for Rachel Jones, who was in position on the backside. But one-on-one -on -one beats her defender, gets a ball in, and Rachel Jones just can't quite get her head wrapped around that one. Maybe if she was a couple feet backwards or if the ball was lofted a little bit more. But regardless, good chance by Carolina. Pinto flicks that one to Wubin Moy. She'll have to recover as the Tar Heels pound Stevens and she just sends it up towards midfield. Here's Emily Fox. Fox ahead to Moy. A little back and forth. Finally, Andrew Jeske will win it. Pass off the mark. And that's a rare turnover from Pinto, who makes up what a lot of people call one of the best midfield pairings in the country between her and Taylor Otto. Within this system, both of those players can really, really thrive and show their personality on the ball, and that will be very important for Carolina going forward. Mitchell, too much pace on her pass, gives it away. It'll be North Carolina ball, but not before we get another substitution for the Tar Heels. Isabella Cox, the freshman from Greensboro, checking in. Cox saw 25 minutes of action on Thursday night in a 3 0 win for the Tar Heels. And I was a bit surprised, Kyle, that they only did score three. They dominated possession, similar to how they're doing so tonight. Russo to Goff. Goff back to the top of the box for Gambone. Otto looking for Cox. Maybe one too many passes there for Carolina. As Andrew Jeske gathers it in far side. Goff just misses on the header. Give chase as Bodie plays it ahead. Looking for that ball over top, but two Carolina defenders there. Bodie, a nice slide tackle there from Goff. Looked like Bodie might have a step on her. Goff able to get there just in time with a clean tackle. And what a play there from Morgan Goff. Anson calls her perhaps the best tackler on the team, and she showcased it there, doing a great job of, of getting back and making that not such a dangerous play, but Morgan Goff, what an effort. A senior from Dunn, North Carolina. Moving oh. away, looking to spark an offensive attack, flicked on by Russo. Here's Gambone. Gambone with the ball on her right foot, into the box. Wide for Andrew Jeske, she tried to give it right back. Jones sends it out of bounds. And great job by Gambone there to hold on to the ball, facing backwards inside of the box. Definitely a tough player. Andrew Jeske couldn't get that one in, but Gambone did a wonderful job of playing with her back to goal. Tar Heels can't work it back down into the attacking third. Bodie sends it wide. Graham not going to get there in time, though. Looks like Duke getting ready for their first substitution of the game. So far, just two from Carolina. Carolina. 
Told you how many players North Carolina came in with off the bench. It was 10. There's a shot from Cox. Excuse me, that's Emily Fox. Tar Heels played 10 subs Thursday, 9 of them, 20-plus minutes. The opposite side of that, a Duke team who's thin, played just two players off the bench more than 20 minutes. And the depth of this Carolina squad is absolutely remarkable. They run down the other team's defense nearly every time with the amount of star power they have on their front lines. Nice cross from Andrew Jeske. Isabel Cox couldn't quite get that one directed on frame. Tar Heels keep the pressure on, though. Fox, just the latest Tar Heel with some caps with the U.S. national team. Gambone turns up ball, leaves it for her teammate Otto. Still loose, Gambone can't get the shot off. Two spectacular saves from Heinsen. And Brooke Heinsen not once but twice keeping North Carolina out of the goal. What an effort from her. You see her, she turns, tries to knock the ball in, but there's Heinsen ready, and then she gets up, blocks it, stands back up, and gets the rebound, shutting out number 16 for North Carolina, Allie Gambone, not once but twice. That save while laying down. All you can do is just put the hands out and hope that the ball finds him. And how impressive that she got back up and got the save a second time, Kyle. It does look like the junior Taylor Mitchell who played all 90 minutes on the back line. A bit gimpy after that. Keep an eye on her. Pinto will play the corner kick for the Tar Heels. They're first of the match. Towards the back post. Keeper off the line. Couldn't get a touch on it. Defense up to the task, though. They'll clear it out. Fox will play it back in. Couple of Tar Heels there. Andrew Jeske with the header. And another save made by Heinsen. This ball came out from the corner, and Emily Fox with the wonderful service from the right flank. She hits this ball in, and Bridget Andrew Jeske gets ahead on it. Wubin Moy was there if she couldn't, but great contact from Andrew Jeske, but she's denied by Heinsen. Same setup. Pinto will play it in. This time more of a liner to the back post. Just over the head of the Tar Heel in the box, I believe. That was Maggie Pierce. Gretchen Macy Bell, who she was targeting. Switch fields for the corner, and it'll be Alessia Russo for the Tar Heels. Bone in front of the keeper. Andrew Jeske at the back post moving towards the front now. Russo sends it back post. Again, they were looking for the freshman Bell. Couldn't quite direct that one towards the frame. Good ball from Russo. Macy Bell, a target on this one. 5'11 freshman. You see her as a target so far on a couple set pieces. And don't be surprised if she continues to be a big part of this offense, not only this season, but in years to come. Mackenzie Pluck, the sophomore, is the one who checks in for Duke, their first sub of the game. Pluck played 49 minutes on Thursday. Second on the team with four shots registered in the game. And with talking with Coach Church prior to this week's games, he said they really, even though they aren't deep, he felt like they had 11 starters for those 10 positions out there, not counting the goalkeeper and Pluck was that 11th player. But in a game like this, when North Carolina can play so many talented players, Kyle, you just have to think eventually that starting 11 is going to get worn down and that one sub just won't be sufficient. Starting to get closer to that 30-minute mark here in this first half. That's usually when Anson will start to make the changes up top. We've seen two so far. Looks like a couple more heading over there now. There's the freshman Julia Dorsey as well as the redshirt senior Rue Mucherera.
freshman Julia Dorsey actually here on a lacrosse scholarship. She attended a soccer ID camp last spring and impressed the coaching staff with her raw athleticism, but a dual sport athlete as a freshman here at Carolina. Something that Anson doesn't shy away from. I'm not sure how many coaches would care one way or the other who's got the scholarship, but a number of players throughout the years that have had multiple scholarships that played for the soccer program. Claudia Dickey, who we'll see in the second half in goal, is another one. She's got a women's basketball scholarship. Ball played into space by Pluck, but nobody there. Here come the subs for the Tar Heels. It is indeed Julia Dorsey, Lou Mucherera. Andrew Jeske and Otto will be the two players who come off the pitch and get a breather. Redshirt senior Rue Mucherera, an exciting player to watch. She actually started off playing soccer when she was five years old in Kentucky on a boys league. She's got a motor on her, and I think it's one of the reasons that he loves to bring her in as one of the first people off the bench. Talked about the high pressure. We've seen it. She may be up there with Ruben Moy as far as being able to apply that pressure. Maybe not as long as she can, though. Cox lost it on the first touch. Mitchell forces that one to be passed back to Mitchell. Mitchell with some good footwork gets rid of Cox temporarily. And you see it already there, Kyle. Rue Mucherera making an immediate impact, getting possession back for the Tar Heels. A little miscommunication. Stevens plays it out of bounds. Nine shots taken in the game so far, just one from Duke, eight from the Tar Heels, but a couple of really nice saves from Brooke Heinsen has kept this one scoreless. Trying to get rid of McGuire. Instead loses it. Ball played ahead. Pluck waits for some help. Nobody comes and it will go out of bounds and be a goal kick for the Tar Heels. Okay. Russo near side trying to get the attention of jo uh, Josephson. She had the entire side of the field to herself for a while. Some miscommunication on the back line there. Macy Bell thought the keeper, Josephson, was going to go for it. Josephson had dropped back, and Bell just forced to play it out of bounds. Not some of the kinks you have to work out with a freshman on defense. You might see that preseason, the beginning of this season, but I wouldn't expect that when you in season midseason form, Kyle. Challenge there from Jones to force the turnover. Offside flag is going to go up. McGuire just never got back onside after the turnover. You see it here. Duke kind of struggling to get numbers in the box, but definitely offside by about a foot, even if she were to be able to play that ball. Duke definitely needs to work on getting more numbers in the final third. Carolina works that right side again. Mitchell on defense, ball cross, back post. Mucherera got up there and got a head on it. Not able to redirect it, though. And way to win on the outside. Nice ball there from Isabel Cox looking to find Mucherera on the backside, but she can't quite get around her defender and get good contact on that one. But nice service from Cox. A 
11 minutes to go in this first half, a non-conference matchup between 8th-ranked Duke and 2nd-ranked North Carolina. Appreciate you joining us tonight on ACC Network Extra. Alongside Natalie Bodie, I'm Kyle Straub. And in case you've heard the name called, we had this conversation beforehand, no relation to Tess Bodie. <laughs> Not a very common last name, so that one did kind of throw me a bit, but thank you for clarifying that one, Kyle. Nice footwork from Mucherera to start a run. She'll drop it back. Pinto leaves it for Goff. Again, Carolina goes to the right side for the attack. And with 10 minutes remaining in the half, I am a bit surprised to see it scoreless, Kyle. Carolina has had majority of the opportunities and possession if you're just tuning in, so don't be fooled, but have not gotten to put one away. Heinsohn had a pair of really good saves, but still zeros on the board. She's been challenged three times. It was up to the task all three. It took spectacular saves each time for her to keep it scoreless, but that's something that Robbie Church told me was going to have to be her identity this year. She was a little inconsistent last year. If they want to have the season that they're hoping to have, they need her to have some big-time games. She's done it so far, at least. Interesting story with Heinsohn. Her grandpa actually played for the Boston Celtics, and he's been the TV announcer for them since the 80s. Dorsey plays the ball in. Gambone looking to make a run. Too much pace on that one, though. Madison Schultz. Lewis Jones, the two, or Joel, excuse me, the two who came in. Joel, an interesting story. Player from England that Hanson told me he never really got to see. Had to go and trust Lada Wubin Moy as well as Alessia Russo, who played with her over in England and said, Coach, you need to bring this girl over here. And if that doesn't speak to the relationship that Coach Dorrance has with his players, I don't know what does, Kyle. Now a, a trio of interna England, English internationals on this team, but quite the story there. Durr and Piper in for the Blue Devils as they made a couple of switches. Here comes Ruben Moy. Her pass a little bit off the mark as it's behind Joel. First year in Carolina for Joel, but as far as eligibility goes, she's a junior. Dorsey with eyes up. Duke looking to spring that counterattack. They just haven't been crisp with those passes through the midfield. Too many turnovers. You mentioned it, and especially on that counterattack, they need to get wide on the other side of the field, really hanging on the opposite side. And a couple of times they could switch the point of attack, perhaps find Ram on the outside, but haven't done so. Cox able to take that one away, crossed it, but nobody in a blue jersey there. Duke having some trouble clearing it. It goes back to the Tar Heels. You can see some frustration from Robbie Church, the 19th year as the head coach for Duke women's soccer. A couple of exhibitions for Duke before they played their first regular season game on Thursday, and I asked him, what did you learn from the team from those couple exhibitions? One against Campbell, the other one down against Georgia. He said, one thing I learned is that we've got some good players, but we're a long way from where we want to be. Some players are going to have to step up and develop throughout this year. We're going to get better every single game. They definitely lack their go-to on the offense, Kyle. They don't have a Brianna Pinto or a Taylor Otto, and they really need some creativity up top. Alexis Strickland in for the Tar Heels. And how tough is that for a player? Take who we, we highlighted at the beginning of the game, Ellis Stevenson. 11 assists last year. Clearly a good offensive player, but to change that mindset of setting players up and becoming the player who gets set up or create for yourself, how tough is that for a player to make that transition? 
Definitely a tough transition, but Gerla Stevens. Bad giveaway there. Ru Mucherero with a great chance at the top of the 18. Left footed shot. The defender gets in the way. That was Pascal. Poor pass here. Rue Mucherera there to clean it up. Goes one on one. Goes to the side and there she is. Tries to rip a shot when she cut it back. Maybe she should have took that one with her right foot. But what a giveaway in the back from Duke. Joel plays a low cross. I don't think that's what she intended to do is Ruben Boy got a foot on it and plays it out of bounds. Back to your thought before the excitement happened. How tough was it for a player? How tough do you think it is? It's a tough transition, but if you're Ella Stevens, you have to understand you're one of three seniors on this Duke team. There's a lot of responsibility carried on your shoulders. You're a co-captain. It's necessary to switch roles and go from a creator to a finisher. Not saying that she can't serve out a lot of assists this year, Kyle, but she's definitely got to have more of an attacking and scoring mindset. Einstein's ball going to roll all the way back to the Carolina keeper, Josephson. Schultz battling on the far side. Senior from Edmonds, Washington. Jones plays one in. McGuire. Tar Heel defense able to clear it away. Good step there from Julia Dorsey to get that one out of the back. Trera will settle it, leave it for Joel. Tar Heels looking near side. Dorsey challenged by Piper and loses it. Foul will go against Mucherera. That looks like an easy call to me. Mucherera steps up, going for the ball, but just ends up hitting her Duke player. Easy call there, no ball, just some aggression on the outside from Mucherera. It's kind of the give and take with Rue. She's got such a high energy, such a high motor, that sometimes she might get a little bit out of control. Played ahead for McGuire. She'll let a shot go. Good read from the keeper, Josephson. Would not have mattered, though, as the flag was up. And that is the third offsides now against Duke this half. Chirera plays one into space. Cox giving chase. She's got some help there with Strickland, but the offside flag up on the opposite side of the field. Mentioned this just before we came on air. A little bit of a change for Carolina in the uniform. The Argyle running down the back. It's a nice addition to these uniforms. I really like it. I have to agree with you, Kyle. I think the Navy Argyle is a nice touch on the Carolina Blue. I'm a fan as well. You know the Carolina fans are happy to see it. They would have been happy to see any Carolina uniform for soccer as it's been two years since the team has had a true home game. With this new stadium being built, they have been out in Wake Med Soccer Park each of the last two seasons. Foul against the Tar Heels will give Duke an opportunity to put together a set piece. A wonderful facility over at Wake Med, but it is something else to have your own home field, Kyle. And you can go into the locker room versus having to go on the sideline. It makes a difference. Pascal will play this free kick in for the Blue Devils, and they steal a goal before halftime. Looking for Jones. Mucherera got a foot on it for the heels. Joel looking to spark the counterattack for the Tar Heels. Great job by Joel there to kind of battle her defender and hold on to the ball. 
This is Goff as we approach a minute. Trying to get that one through to Madison Schultz. Not able to do so. And get one more substitution for the Tar Heels before the half. Allie Clanky, the freshman from Lee Summit, comes into the game. Joel to Fox. Joel trying to take it down the far sideline. Here's an opportunity. Ball crossed. Tar Heels get the header and Tar Heels take the lead. Alexis Strickland, the freshman, with her first collegiate goal. And North Carolina up one to nothing. And what a ball served in on the outside to give Strickland her first ever goal. Gets ahead of her defender here, serves this one up, and Strickland finishes that one. What a beautiful technical header. She gets up, gets on top of the ball, and puts that one away far post. And if you were asking yourself just a few seconds ago, what do you make a change for with a minute to go? You make it right there because the assist, Haley Clanky, the player who came in. And how much does that mean for Clanky to get an assist right when she comes into the game and then let Strickland get her first ever goal? What a play and what a substitution by Anson Dorrance. Freshman able to connect in Carolina, the one nothing lead as we get ready for halftime. Well, Duke definitely has to stay a bit more compact on defense, and they also need to look to switch their point of attack, really leaning to one side of the field. But with Carolina putting one away at the very end of that half, I think they're going to have a lot to think about. Ten shots for the Tar Heels in the first half. The final one is the one that counts. It's a one nothing lead for the second-ranked Tar Heels against the eighth-ranked Duke Blue Devils on ACC Network Extra.
You can watch what happens in your life and you go back to the things that meant the most to you. You can feel it in the air, you feel it in your bones. I cherish each moment because it goes by fast. This place is different. Can't quite explain it. Not a collection of campuses, a set of values. To me, it's three things where you started, where you are, and where you're going to be. Knowledge is power, effort breeds success. Unity is strength. My love is stronger than yours. It's stronger than yours. It's stronger than yours. For 66 years, these principles have provided the foundation for records to be broken. Get out there and play Florida State baseball. Rivalries grow. And legacies to be made in arenas of all kinds. Good evening, I'm Ken Koppel, and this is Nightline. They arrive with promise. K R Z Y C E W S. They leave as proof. Ham, Palmer, Primetime, Jordan. Heisman winners. Boston College, Cubs. Lamar Jackson, University of Louisville. First round draft picks. Zion Williamson from Duke University. World Cup victors. National champions. An excellence in sports is paralleled by every other pursuit. Presidents. Nobel Prize recipients. Space Voyagers. We move through the world like shooting stars across the sky. The ACC's preeminence is real. Virginia is the national champion. Not a concept. But community. I love every minute I spent at Duke. Connected. If you smell what the cane. Cooking. From the open fields of Tobacco Road to the top of a golden dome. Many colors. One home. One place to see it all. There's only two colors. Darn it and gold. It's a Cairns thing. They won't understand. We are the Fighting Irish. Go Eagles. Go Tigers. Go Deep. Yeah. A root for Carolina over Duke. Please. Let's go Panthers. Welcome to ACC Network. Brand new stadium for the Carolina Tar Heels, recognizing some of that rich history. A late goal gave them a one nothing lead at halftime.
There is some serious talent in a picture being posed for right now at midfield. Representatives for the history of the North Carolina women's soccer program. And right now, the soccer team with a one nothing lead against the Duke Blue Devils. A non-conference matchup, but these two teams are going to compete for the ACC championship. Take a look at the preseason polls. Carolina picked to win it again. Florida State, the number one team in the country, right behind them. Duke coming in fourth, which is where they actually finished last year. But like I said, and we've talked about as they progress, it's going to be a battle for the top spot, and it necessarily doesn't need to be the top spot. The Seminoles seventh last year, and they went on to win the national championship. Part of the reason, though, these two teams, Natalie, are at the top every single year is because of the recruiting classes. They're both able to bring in both top five in the country, and North Carolina's recruiting class, well, they just showed us. They're pretty good. Absolutely, Kyle. The number four recruiting class in the country. And before the break, you saw it. Holly Clanky to Alexis Strickland. Freshman to freshman goal. You have Macy Bell, Maggie Pierce, Ali Gambone, all standout players. But what depth Carolina has. And these three freshmen will definitely make an immediate impact. And we talked about a couple players that Duke is looking to replace. The top five recruiting class will go a long way in helping with that, starting with Sophie Jones. Obviously, Sophie Jones possesses a ton of talent. Second best player in the nation, according to Top Door Soccer, when she graduated National Gatorade Girls Soccer Player of the Year. But don't overlook Sarah Piper and Ruthie Jones, who both individually will bring a lot of fire to this Duke team. The future of the rivalry, right now we have the current of the rivalry, and it's a one nothing North Carolina lead here on ACC Network Extra. Back here at the Carolina Soccer and Lacrosse Stadium, a 1-0 lead for North Carolina at halftime. 
Some history celebrated for the Tar Heels. As we turn our attention towards the second half, Natalie, North Carolina, really threatened a lot in that first half. It took them a while to break through, though. So it all started here. Woman Moy serves this ball into the box to freshman Macy Bell, who's offside, but good chance by her. Then you see there's Ali Gambone battling Brooke Heinsen. Not once, but twice Heinsen saves it, and she's fired up. This ball served in. Andrzejewski gets her head on it, but can't quite finish that one. And you see bad turnover here, but Mucherera there to pick it up. She takes this one with her left foot, but might have had a better, better angle with her right. Regardless, way to read that ball from her. Then super sub here. Clanky serves this ball in, and Strickland is on the end of that one. How about some freshman-to-freshman -freshman action to kick off your season? Great ball and great finish by Strickland. Joel, the newcomer, also credited with an assist on that goal. And you look at the stats, Natalie. And everything tells you what our eyes saw. It was domination by the Tar Heels. But you got to feel okay about things if you're Duke. It's just a one nothing game. You're absolutely right, Kyle. It's a one nothing game. They've stayed compact on defense. And like I said before, if they can switch the point of attack, spread North Carolina out a little bit, they could see their chances opening up. But Heinsohn's done a great job in goal, and, and that's what Coach Church hammered home, and she's really lived up to that expectation. Mars Josephson, the freshman, got the start in goal for Carolina, but we told you we knew it was going to happen. It's an Anson Doran's specialty. They switch at halftime, and the veteran, even though she's a sophomore, Claudia Dickey will come in now. And that, again, speaks to the depth that Dorrance has at his disposal. Both goalkeepers too good, so let's just play both. Tar Heels had possession to start the game off, so Duke will have it to start the second half off. From what you saw in that first half, Natalie, what do the Blue Devils need to do to be able to build some offense and put some pressure on Carolina? Well, it's a lot of what Coach Robbie Church talked about. Offensively, they desperately need some spark. Defensively, they're not doing poorly. Carolina is just that good. And with all the chances that Carolina have had, only breaking through one time, I'd consider that a win for Duke. But they've got to open up and spread out their attack, Kyle. She's Natalie Bodie. I'm Kyle Straub. We appreciate you joining us for tonight's game here on ACC Network Extra. A gorgeous night in a August night, you don't expect cool temperatures, but that's exactly what we got. Thursday's games delayed by rain, and we'll have some cool weather afterwards. Temperatures just in the 70s. Gotta love that if you're out there on the field. And fabulous weather, especially for a rivalry game, and not just any rivalry game. I might be a little biased, but the best rivalry in sports you can see in Duke, Kyle. I don't think that's bias. I just think that's factual. <laughs> Here comes Carolina Jones with the cross, a little bit flat. Mitchell able to send it out. Pinto sends it back out towards Jones. Jones tries to get to the left foot, does. And he's going to get a corner for the Tar Heels. It'll be their fifth of the game. Rachel Jones, I'm going to look to see her get more involved on attack. Anson Dorrance calls her creatively one of our best players that we have on the roster, showcasing it there, but definitely needs to be more active in Carolina's attack. Pinto will play the corner kick in for the Tar Heels. Sends this one towards the back post. Tried to serve it in. She'll gather it in near side. Pass it a flick to Russo. Back post. I believe that was Wubin Moy who got ahead on it. Just could not redirect it. Second half begins. How the first half ended. Taylor Otto cleaning things up. Nice little flick to Russo. Gets this ball in. Wubin Moy the target here. She's a little frustrated she can't get around that one, but... Some cheeky play there between Otto and Russo. Three subs used for the Duke Blue Devils in the first half. Pluck, who came in and played 18 minutes out there to start the second half. For Carolina, it's a mix between some subs and some starters. It's expected, though. The second half is when the rules change and allow Anson to really use that depth. First half, you come out, you're not allowed to re-enter. Second half, it's free range. You can come in and go out as much as the coach wants.
It was a fairly clean first half as well as that whistle went against Duke. There were just 10 total fouls, and memory serves me correct, Duke had four or five in the first couple minutes of the game. Everybody really settled in. I mean, we harp on it, but especially for a rivalry game, I'm a little surprised by that stat line there. I just expect to see a little bit more, but can't complain about clean play from both sides playing good soccer. Grant throws it in for the Tar Heels. Fox read that one perfectly and cuts it off. Tar Heels go back to Jones on the far side. Carolina getting numbers forward as Fox plays it out wide for Goff. Cross deflected by Goff. Pass off the mark. Otto will get to it, but her pass off the mark as well. A little bit sloppy to start this second half. Here comes Duke on the counterattack. Graham all the way from the back line. Just play it forward. Pluck. The offside flag up. Fourth against Duke in the game. That was good work by Graham getting out wide, calling for the ball on transition, beating Otto, and then decent ball served up to uh, McKinley Pluck, who just finds herself a little ahead of the back line. It seems like going back to the end of the first half and now the beginning of this, the offsides have come more recently for Duke, and how much of that could be some frustration of not being able to get the ball in the attacking third? And I am a bit surprised by the amount of offsides we've seen called here tonight. But again, beginning of this season, some things you expect to be worked out later on. Until we're able to take that one away from Nabek. Jones back towards the middle of the field. Footwork far side, ball loose. And there's that creative play by Rachel Jones, such a fun player to watch. <laughs> Box with a nice one touch out wide. Russo tries to cross it. Nice close from Graham to get a foot in front. Duke has done a pretty good job at shutting down Alessia Russo. She's been a little bit more quiet this game. I think they definitely targeted her as one of the most talented on UNC's offense. Of course, it's, it's hard to pick with the amount of star power they have. She did lead North Carolina last season with six goals before she went down. That was in their last regular season game right before the postseason started. Broke her leg against the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. At the end of the year, both Pito and Ashley tied her with six goals, but they scored a couple in postseason play. I was a little surprised when I asked Anson about Alessia. So coming back from that kind of an injury, how's she looking? How does she feel? And he said she looks like the old Alessia kind of caught me off guard it hasn't even been a year removed since the injury especially with an injury as big as breaking your leg I'm agreeing with you Kyle but good to hear if you're a Tar Heel fan opportunity here for Duke after the Tar Heel foul senior Ellis Stevens plays it in looking for the back post Tar Heels were there the defense got ahead on it and it'll result in the first corner of the game for Duke And there's senior Ella Stevens stepping up and being a creator, doing what she does best. As Kyle mentioned earlier, 11 assists last year, big leader on the team, looking to see her become a goal scorer this season. Stevens played the free kick. She'll go play the corner as well. Served a, a good ball in. Luck ranging over. Low liner towards the back post. Looked like Dickey got a hand on that one. And a foul going to be called as she had the chair taken out from underneath her. 
But a quality service there from Ella Stevens does well to get her teammates in a position to score. Dickey doing a good job to get that one out. Thought it was going to be another corner, but like you said, foul inside of the box, and this will go back to Carolina. Duke applying a little bit of high pressure. That was Mackenzie Pluck. Forced the turnover as Ruben Moy's pass was off the mark. Here come the Blue Devils. Referee indicating that one got up and hit the hand of the attacking player. I have noticed some more aggressiveness from Duke here in this second half on the offensive side. I would have liked to know what Robbie Church told his team at the half, but you're absolutely right. They're bringing a little bit more energy, seeing some changes implemented at the start of this half. They've gotten a couple more chances, but hopefully they can keep that going. Bell's first touch got away from her nearly. Gave the Blue Devils a great opportunity with Jow closing quick. Maybe not so much of a mistake by Bell. She didn't hold on to it a little bit long, but good pressure by Jow playing that high pressure that UNC loves to play so much as well. And so to Wubin Moy. Looking for Gambone. Sophie Jones got in the way of it. Duke not quite able to connect on that last pass to spring somebody into the 18. Again, though, they take it away from the heels at midfield. Maybe played that one wide. Goff steps in front and takes it away. Feels looking a little bit sloppier in the midfield at the beginning of this half. Need to clean it up a little bit. A couple unorthodox turnovers, including that one from Brianna Pinto as she tried to get it back. Talking about some of the subs and the way that Anson kind of uses the subbing rules to his advantage some of those players came out and started the second half which meant some starters got a longer breather Bridget Andrzejewski one of them she's ready to come back into the game she's sat for about 20 or 30 minutes you've got to be energized and feel like it's just the beginning of the game already you're absolutely right and if you're a Duke player that's been in nearly the entire time of the game 34 minutes that's a scary sight to see Andrzejewski refresh and coming off the bench and back in the game Things getting a little more physical in this first half, or the second half as compared to the first half. Foul against the freshman Sophie Jones. Tar Heels with numbers forward as Wuben Moy plays it to the top of the 18. Russo, she'll put the brakes on temporarily. Nice give and go between her and Fox. Russo, the cross, back post. She couldn't quite get around that one to keep it in bounds. Nice give and go there between Fox and Russo, and even Jones keeping that ball in bounds. If play wouldn't have been stopped, that would have been another great effort by Rachel Jones, who again had the diving header in the first. What an effort player, a creative player. Rachel Jones, only a sophomore, but really a leader on this team. 30 minutes in the first half for Andrew Jeske. She comes back on now as she replaces Isabel Cox. Stevens. To get that one, to get a foot in front of that one, nearly sprung herself. But Ruben Moy, you talked about it in the open. A player that Anson says has the best conditioning he's seen. Jow trying to give a run. Again, it's the North Carolina defense. This time the freshman Bell who gets back in time. And I thought almost certainly Stevens was going to run that one down, but Wubin Moy comes from behind and just simply beats her with her, her speed in a foot race alone, but great effort by her. Nice job by the freshman Bell to come over with some help defense. Still just one shot for Duke, but the offense... 
Looking like it's clicking a little better here in this second half. Gambone going to play this one wide for Andrew Jeske. She's got Fox with her. Jones also there. Russo making a run. And that one is going to be out of bounds. Touched by the keeper. I'm not sure if that's where Andrew Jeske wanted to put that one. But regardless, it's going to earn a corner for the Tar Heels. Andrew Jeske doing a good job to get wide to create that opportunity. Sixth corner of the game for the Heels. They go back post. Jones, the first player to get to it for Duke. Blue Devils trying to play over top for Tess Bodie on the far side. Sophie Jones definitely done a really good job handling the ball for Duke. If it wasn't so much pressure on their front lines, she could probably get forward a bit more and that would really benefit them, but she's cleaning up a lot defensively for the Blue Devils, Kyle. Jones and Pinto far side. Pinto going to reverse field, but nobody home on the other side. It's a turnover in their own zone. Graham leaves it for Jow. Russo takes it away instead. Bell trying to spring Andrew Jeske free. Andrew Jeske now in her senior season. Scored the first goal of the year for Carolina. Forever go down as the first goal scored by a Carolina player here in their brand new stadium. It was funny reading some of the quotes afterwards. Andrew Jeske said, I was just excited to score the goal. <laughs> Brianna quickly reminded me of the fact that it's the first goal, and I had to go over and she told me, go celebrate with the fans. <laughs> and that's exactly what Brianna did when she scored the first of her two goals in that game on Thursday, Kyle. She had a, a wonderful celebration. And, and talking to her dad, apparently something they talked about at home is she had weak goal celebrations last year and she really <laughs> needed to step it up a notch so I'd say she definitely did so a couple of more subs for North Carolina Rue Mucherera back out there as well as Maggie Pierce Mucherera with the cross couldn't get around that one it'll be a goal kick Three saves in the first half from Brooke Heinsohn. One of them while laying on the ground. Otherwise, this one nothing game could be much bigger lead for the Tar Heels. There is the goal scorer, Alexis Strickland, coming back in. And on the opposite side, not a lot of action for the Carolina keepers. If you're Anson Dorrance, you're probably eager to learn about both of your keepers and decide if one is going to get more time, but neither really have been tested, and Thursday neither has had to make a save either, so either the defense is just doing a really good job or Duke hasn't really gotten to break free and, and really test either Claudia Dickey or Mars Josephson. Auto to Andrew Jeske. She's got some space, Andrew Jeske. Russo asked for it, but Bridget couldn't get the pass across. Jow will track it down near side for the Blue Devils. High pressure forces the turnover. What a good read there from Emily Fox. Redistributes that one outside, but... Nice heel pass there from Andrew Jeske. Fox nutmegs the defender. Just off the mark there for Andrew or for Russo. Fox mi missed the mark on that last pass, but looks like she's out here having fun with it, Kyle, settling into her role. Nice step up there by Pierce as she was able to take it away. Can't get that one on frame. 
So here's Emily Fox gets the ball on the outside. Or excuse me, Andrew Dusky gets the ball to Emily Fox. There she is. Quick little nutmeg. Takes it herself. Frees some space. A nice back, hit, back heel from Andrew Dusky. So let Fox play with it on that play as well. Pierce again comes up and takes the ball away. Give and go back to Pierce. Can she get to it? She cannot. It'll go out of bounds for another goal kick for the Blue Devils. Freshman going all out, forcing a couple of turnovers deep in Duke territory. That's Maggie Pierce all over the field for the Tar Heels. What a great effort she's put in here. You would hardly know that she's a freshman. Mitchell looking for Jow instead. Bell able to step in front. Also comes in after the play. Otto doesn't agree with it. Players got there at the same time, but Graham got the worst of it. Referee gave the foul call to the Blue Devils. Looked to me like they got there right on time. Jarrera keeps it in far side. This ball played ahead to Russo. She has no options and slows things up. Just two shots by the Tar Heels in this half after they unleashed 10 in the first half. Despite more offensive possession for Duke, they have not gotten a shot off at all in this half. They're still sitting at just one for the game as the Tar Heels earned themselves their seventh corner. And they showed some more spark at the beginning of the half, Kyle, but in the past five to eight minutes, it's really been all Carolina, and you have to wonder how much does that come down to the immense depth that Carolina has, putting in all these subs and these Duke players, mainly the same squad in this game, are just getting worn down. Haley Clanky, one of those subs back onto the field for the Tar Heels. And it seems like when that second wave of subs came in this half is when things started to go back towards North Carolina as far as possession goes. Looks like Ruben Moy will play the corner kick in for the Tar Heels. Jarrera moving towards the front post. Ball floats to the back. Strickland tried to get it back to Clanky, could not. Looks like a target on a lot of these set pieces is Macy Bell, 5'11 freshman defender. A little surprised that they continue looking for her, but I guess I, I shouldn't be, Kyle. She's done so well and appears so confident on the ball for her first season of soccer here at North Carolina. She's the biggest player on the roster for either team outside of the keeper Heinzen for Duke. He's listed at Looks like they're sending Maggie Pierce off for Carolina. They're sending her off. I'm guessing she's got some blood coming from somewhere that they'll have to patch up. So that allows the Tar Heels to get Joel back out on the field. Yes, Bodie back on for the Blue Devils. Dickey way out of the box, plays that one back across midfield for the heels. Box for Joel. Ten minutes of playing time for the junior in the first half. Over the head of Andrew Jeske.
Joel sends it out wide. Dorsey making a run. Gerrera back to Joel. Got herself tripped up on the ball, and here comes Sophie Jones with a lot of room in front of her. Jones right down the middle of the field. She'll have to slow things up as five Carolina defenders got back. A little bit sloppy from both sides there as Sophie Jones capitalizes on a Carolina mistake but then loses the ball at the other end herself. Jones named to Top Drawer Soccer's best 11 freshman team in the preseason. Not a big surprise there. We showed you at halftime, the number three overall recruit in the country. Some miscommunication there between Dorsey and Mucharera. We mentioned it earlier, a big key for the Blue Devils is Sophie Jones getting forward Coach Robbie Church said that it's going to be massive for their offense to allow her the freedom and flexibility to create on the offense, but tonight she's just been so weighed down by defensive duties, Kyle. I mean, she really hasn't had the chance to get ahead and get forward in front of these Carolina players. Andrew Jeske working on the far side of the field, leaves it for Mucharera. Mucharera with the cross. Andrew Jeske just missed the header. She is down in the box. Looked like she collided with a Duke defender as the ball made its way through. Back to her own two feet. She's going to wave the trainers off. Looks like it's a shoulder area. The way she tried to raise her arm there. And it looks like as she was battling for that header, I think it was her shoulder, Kyle. And a lot of pain there, but up walking now and looks fine. It's Bridget Andrzejewski that was taken down. Senior just a hair off in her timing. I think they're going to send her off because clock got stopped and it was somewhere in the head area. Obviously, you go through procedures. Make sure everything's okay and then let her back out onto the field. At least for the moment. It's endurance not going to make a sub and that was a quick conversation. She's just fine. She'll head back to the scorer's table. Both teams 1-0. Duke with a 2-0 win over LaSalle on Thursday as Andrew Jeske comes back onto the field. Tar Heels with a 3-0 win, thanks in part to Bridget Andrew Jeske and her goal for Indiana on Thursday. Tar Heels will be on the road on Wednesday. The very first road game, they'll go all the way out west and take on Washington which is where Madison Schultz is from. For the Blue Devils, they'll have a home match on Tuesday be against the Georgetown Hoyas. Nice job of shielding by Fox as that ball is corralled and out of bounds. Battling for the ball here, you see bit of attitude there from Delaney Graham getting a little bit frustrated as she's being locked down on that side by number 11 for the Tar Heels Emily Fox Graham's been really battling on that side all game unsurprising to see some frustration for her from Fox who really has just shut her down a step up there from Jow forces the turnover here come the Blue Devils ball played wide Dorsey able to get back, and she takes it off the feet of Stevens. Tar Heels look for the counterattack. 
Four back for Duke. Carolina's got five moving forward. Strickland plays it into space. Looked like Clanky got turned around. Fox to Clanky. Game's been played more in the midfield here in this second half. Tar Heels trying to get themselves some insurance. There's a nice cross. Pascal able to flick it away with the head. Joel keeps it in the attacking third. She sends one in. Pascal again with the header. That cross from Hallie Clanky, the freshman. She's shown a lot of energy on the outside for North Carolina. She's from Cary. Early enrollee in January, but still considered a freshman. And she's looking like an early star on the outside, Kyle. Dorsey will come up for the Tar Heels as the starter Morgan Goff comes back on. Clinky, one of 11 freshmen brought in this year by Anson Dorns. Fourth ranked overall recruiting class. When you hear that, that's no big surprise for either North Carolina or Duke to have top five. Schultz with some good work, gets through, puts one on frame. Knight's been forced to play it out of bounds. The point I was getting to, though, is Anson told me when he got this place built that he immediately saw an uptick in recruiting. Nice play there by Joel. Joel battling there. Madison Schultz getting around her defender, ripping one. Nice tip away by Heinsohn, but great effort by Schultz. Joel plays the corner in short. It will give Carolina another one, though, as it's knocked out of bounds. Here comes the line change we've talked about with Anson Dorrance. It's not one sub, it's not two. He's going to send four new players in right now. Pinto, one of them. Better ball on this serve from Joel. Had it a couple of times and finally cleared out by the Blue Devils. Gambone, Cox, Pinto, three of the four I saw come on for the Tar Heels. Russo, the other one. Fox steps up and takes that one away. Nice move to lose a couple of defenders to cross right into the body of the defender. That is Bodie. And what a build up there by Emily Fox. Wins the ball there, steps up, decides to crank out another move, bring it to the outside, and then she serves one in and earns a corner. But what a build up there and great pass read from Emily Fox. 11th corner of the game for the Heels. Jones just got a piece of that one to send it out. Not very far, but the foul going to go against Pinto and the Tar Heels. Forty-one years as the head coach of North Carolina, and he shows no signs of slowing down. Just recently signed a five-year extension in Anson Dorrance. And players past and present really speak highly of him, Kyle. A lot of them note something he has called the competitive cauldron that really encourages players to work hard and compete with one another while maintaining that family culture here at Carolina. And it's so specific to the Tar Heel soccer program. And he's definitely had tons of success with that. Carolina building through the midfield. Most of the starters back in. Rachel Jones. One of them waiting to check in for the heels. This ball served in. Just off the head of a defender, and it's going to go into the goal. Carolina will get a 2-0 lead. I don't think a single car heel touched that one in the box. We'll have to check the replay. But a ball served in from Morgan Goff gives Carolina an insurance goal. to see 
see the replay, but I agree with you. Morgan Goff serves in that ball, and you're absolutely right. It looks like it was number six for Duke, Caitlin Cosme, who, while trying to defend that play, accidentally scores an own goal. But again, going back to the effort by Goff, when you serve in a dangerous ball like that, anything can happen. They scored that one, a goal for Madison Schultz. We'll see if they change it once they see the replay. Schultz was in the box there. And such a close call there, but looking at the reaction of the players in the box, it did seem like Cosme reacted as if it was an own goal, but it'll be interesting to see the follow-up. And that's just, a, it's a tough feeling for a defender because you played it the way you're supposed to. It just happened to have the right amount of backspin and the perfect angle to beat your own keeper. You're absolutely right. I mean, she was in right place, right time, but sometimes it just happens. Fox has a touch get away from her. Great closing speed. Going to be whistled for a foul, though. A little bit of a shoulder shove. And she will be issued a yellow card as well as she sent Graham to the turf. Fox and Emily Graham going at it on that left side. Remember Graham getting a little bit frustrated with Fox earlier, but here she goes. Emily Fox with a hard push and tackle on the ball. There's running a player off the ball, and there's running a player off the ball. <laughs> and that was the second one, Kyle. <laughs> That'll give Duke a great opportunity for a free kick. Just one goal, uh, one goal so far, one shot for Duke, not on goal. And they did just announce that the goal is an own goal, the second one that was scored. Here's Stevens towards the back post. Too much loft on that one, yeah, and it was read all the way by Dickey. Claudia Dickey, like we mentioned, Kyle, has not tested much, but Dorrance says she has the potential to be one of the best distributors of the ball of all time in a Tar Heel jersey. Great speed shown right there by Cox. Scored one in the first half. Can she get another one? Good footwork. She will get her team a corner kick. That was Isabel Cox, the freshman from Greensboro. Making it look easy on the outside and earning her team a corner. Andrew Jeske back in for the Tar Heels. Would assume for the final 12.30 of the game. As North Carolina gets ready for their 12th corner of the game. Towards the back post, hand on it by the keeper, Heinsohn. And we will just reverse field a corner from the other side for the Tar Heels. Russo took that one. It looks when they switch, Pinto picks up on that side. So Russo will now be in the box as a target for Pinto. It looks like she's right on the outside of the box. So looking towards the back post. Looking for Bell, the freshman again. A little mistimed on the jump. Joel keeps it in. The pass a little too soft. Jones with some nice footwork, but couldn't keep it in bounds on the near sideline. It'll be a turnover to the Tar Heels as Taylor Otto re enters the game. So fresh legs for number six, Taylor Otto, the redshirt junior from Apex. She actually didn't play high school soccer, but a huge ECNL standout. Coach says she knows the game inside and out. Her best qualities are her composure on the ball and her varied skill set. Not counting the two keepers for Carolina as Jones chips one in. Tar Heels have played 16 players 20 minutes or more so far today. 
Andrew Jeske towards the end line. Low liner on the cross. Got through everybody. Tar Heels keeping the pressure on. You've got to imagine that once Duke is able to win possession, they're going to have to take some chances on the offensive side of things now that they're down 2 nothing. You're correct, Kyle. There's no point in hanging back now. Obviously, you don't want to give up some cheap goals to Carolina, but you got to take some chances with two minutes left. Jeske kept that one on the ground. Otto whiffed, and it will go to the Blue Devils. I like the change there, though. Instead of serving one up and lofting it in, kept it on the ground. There's Andrew Jeske serves one in and just whiffs it. This is Joel, but good ball on the ground from Andrew Jeske. And you're right, they've been missing the mark a little bit on the high balls played into the box. Good to see them change it up, their point of attack. But regardless, good ball from Andrew Jeske. Fox will send it all the way back to Dickey. Side flag will go up against Russo. It's the fourth offside against the Tar Heels. Here comes Mitchell. Mitchell threw a couple of defenders before Andrew Jeske gets a foot on it. The boy looking for Gambone. Swartz able to step in front though. Can't keep possession. Jeske going to send this one all the way to the 18. Waiting for it is Heinsohn. First half goal from Alexis Strickland came in the 45th minute. An own goal scored by the Blue Devils has given North Carolina the 2-0 lead. run on the far side. There's some help defense from Ruben Moy. Mia Jow making a run down that far right side. Mia Jow, she's a player that has had kind of a rough go at things. She's a senior, but prior to this season had two season-ending injuries. An ACL and the Achilles tear. But good to have her back on the Duke squad per her coach. She's one of their biggest attacking players. They play the ball over the top to her frequently. Looked her for the aerial t aerial attack, but definitely a leader on this Duke squad. Won't get much easier for the Blue Devils. Their next game on Tuesday, their home opener, it'll be against the Georgetown Hoyas, the same Hoyas that knocked them out of the NCAA tournament last year. Well, North Carolina will challenge themselves, go out west and play a game Wednesday at Washington. Last year, uh, Natalie, it was the West Coast trip that was the turning point for the Tar Heels. They went out west and lost both of their games. Didn't lose another one until the ACC championship. Well, sometimes, Kyle, you learn a lot more in losses than wins. I mean, it's obviously North Carolina wins so many of their games, and how much can you really learn besides when you're challenged and a lot of your flaws are exploited? But you're absolutely right. A turning point in their season, and they learned a lot about last year's team. Otto with a nice ball down the near sideline. Andrew Jeske and Mitchell both get there. Mitchell trying to shield it away from Andrew Jeske. Still hounded by the Tar Heel forward, and finally Mitchell gets around it and gets it out. Well done by Mitchell to get that ball forward, and Dreski really pressing her up top. Timing on the touch is just a little bit off for the Blue Devils. 
Breyer tried to lead that one down the near sideline. Here's Stevens looking for some help. Ruben Moy going to play it wide for Jones. We approach five minutes remaining. Just three shots for the Tar Heels in this second half. It was an own goal scored by Duke that gave the Tar Heels the 2-0 lead. point if you're Carolina you're looking to play just to keep that shutout intact they have not given up a goal in their now second game of the season they shut out Indiana 3-0 ball to Andrew Jeske she flicks that one didn't get enough on it and it's scooped up by Heinsohn the possession here I'm really looking to see Duke take some chances get forward you're down 2-0 why not just Press high and see what you can make happen in the last four minutes. See if you can get one back. That'll help with your confidence regardless, even if you do end up taking the loss. Scoring on Carolina, however, not an easy feat by any means. Over half the games that Anson Dorrance has coached in his 40-plus years at Carolina have resulted. Tar Heels winning by a shutout talk of the offense starts on the back line for Carolina there's Bell coming up from the back to play it forward for Russo Russo down to the corner she'll go right to that flag veteran move from the junior waste some time but really good job there out of the back from Macy Bell Playing like a veteran, they've really looked for her on set pieces. She's been building out of the back, been really strong defensively. Even with a couple of players from Duke surrounding her when she has the ball, she avoids the pressure and always connects with a pass. So a freshman to really look out for, 5'11", freshman Macy Bell. Kenzie Pluck back into the game for the Blue Devils. He's already seen 39 minutes of action off the bench for Duke. Side flag up. Referee saying Russo never got back on side before she played that ball. First of two meetings between these two teams. And although this one may count for bragging rights within the rivalry, it does not count for conference play. So if Duke can win the one later in the season, it'll have some more meaning as far as the ACC championship and seeding for that tournament goes. Well, as both of these teams kind of figure out their system for the 2019 season, it'll be interesting to see some of the changes that will be implemented later in the season, Kyle, as they both figure out more and more about their players and see if a similar scoreline will hold in that game as well. That second matchup will be at Duke, a 7 p.m. kick on October 10th. Stevens to play the free kick. This is from the head referee. There's a foul against Duke as that ball was played in. Believe that that foul went against Mary Kate McGuire. McGuire, the only player to register a shot in the game for Duke, came in the first half. Jones plays that one into space for Russo in behind the defense. Russo to the left foot, the shot. Reflected off of a defender. Carolina couldn't get enough numbers up there in time, so Russo takes it herself. But nice pass from Jones to set Russo up for that one. A 
Under a minute to go. Carolina with the 2-0 lead. They have led since just before the first half when Strickland scored the first goal. Bell gives that one away. Here's a shot. Ruben Moy able to get in front of it. Intended for Stevens. And it'll get out of bounds. That was Mackenzie Pluck with the shot. Second of the game for Duke. So you hear it now, Kyle, around 4,200 fans here filling this stadium. You said capacity is, what, 5,000? you got to be Just happy. Just under, I believe, yeah. Yeah, you got to be happy with that if you're Coach Dorrance. But what an environment they've created with this new stadium and with Duke coming to town and it being a rivalry game. Definitely a spectacular place to play in, especially this evening. One more throw in. Duke will give it one more look. Pinto able to take it away. And that will do it for us here at Carolina Soccer Stadium. The number two ranked North Carolina Tar Heels take down their rival, the eighth ranked Duke Blue Devils, two to nothing. And this one really came down to the depth of Carolina's roster, Kyle. Duke did a good job staying compact while they could, but with so many players and subs at their disposal, Carolina just broke down the Blue Devils. Tar Heels got the first goal just before halftime. They never looked back. An insurance goal added, and that is the final 2 nothing. We'll be right back with a recap right here on ACC Network Extra. Alongside Natalie Bodie, I'm Kyle Stroud back here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where the rivalry was renewed and the Tar Heels came away the victors. 2-0 the final. And Natalie, the goalkeeper for Duke, Brooke Heinsohn, did everything she could to keep her team in it. 
Tar Heels just proved to be too much in the end. Well, you said it here again. Bone and Heinsohn going head-to-head, not once but twice she comes up clutch with the save. That fired her up. Here the ball be served in. Andrew Jeske will get ahead on it. Heinsohn once again comes up clutch. How about this? Freshman to freshman, Clanky to Strickland. will head that one down and put it in the back of the net. You think she's excited to score, Kyle? Gotta and love that first goal of the career. Especially from a, from a fellow freshman. But there you see Cosme. Great ball in, but just Morgan Goff gets that one in and Cosme own goal from her. You hate to see that, but Morgan Goff put her team in a position with a dangerous ball served in. And it may not have been North Carolina who put the ball in the back of the net for the second goal, but they dominated play from the very beginning of this game all the way throughout both shots for the Blue Devils, not on goal as they didn't get through the defense. The corners is really what stood out to me. You're right, and just like on Thursday against Indiana, North Carolina's goalkeepers not really tested, but on the other end, Heinsohn did a great job keeping Duke in it to keep it at only two goals allowed. The newcomers for the Tar Heels, the ones who got it done as they helped to defeat the Duke Blue Devils. It was Alexis Strickland with the goal, Clanky and Joel on the assist to watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on ACC Network. Download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, the Tar Heels, with the 2 to nothing win.